Here we're going to look at what I think is a pretty interesting equation. So we want to solve for all natural numbers A and B that satisfy the following equation. So we have the LCM of AB squared minus the GCD of A and B squared is equal to 48. And so let's recall by the LCM, I mean the least common multiple of A and B. And then by the GCD, I mean the greatest common divisor of A and B. And here are a couple of facts from elementary number theory. So I've got a whole course worth of videos on elementary number theory on one of my playlists. So check that out if you're interested. So the first thing is that if D is the GCD of A and B, well, first of all, A over D and B over D are both integers and they are co-prime. In other words, the GCD of A over D with B over D is one. And then next, the LCM of A and B can be written in terms of the product of A and B and the GCD. And it's in fact the quotient of A times B with the GCD of A and B. Okay, so now that we've seen these facts and we have an idea of our equation, let's see what we can do. So the first thing that I wanna do is take A and B and write them as a multiple of the GCD. So I'll write A equals D times X and let's write B as D times Y, where D is equal to the GCD of A and B. And notice that means that X and Y are co-prime. So let's go ahead and write that down because we might need it later. So we've got the GCD of X and Y is one. Okay, so now let's take this format for A and B, plug it into this equation and see what we get. So we've got this LCM of A, B squared, but notice the LCM is gonna be A times B divided by D. And so that's just gonna give us D times X times Y, and then we need to square it. So just to reiterate, this is the LCM of A and B in this case. Okay, and then minus D squared equals 48. So we've translated our equation into this new equation involving the GCD and these two co-prime integers, X and Y. Next thing that I want to do is factor a D squared out of this thing. And let's see what we get if we do that. So we've got D squared and then X squared, Y squared minus one equals 48. But now this is an equation only with natural numbers. And so what that tells us is that 48 is a factor of D squared. In other words, D squared divides 48 but that really restricts the numbers that D can be because D squared must be a perfect square that divides 48. So that's what we wanna look for. So look for perfect squares dividing 48. And let's see how many that we can find. So notice that one divides 48. So that's pretty obvious. And then let's see, the next perfect square is four and four divides 48 because um, 48 divided by four is 12. Okay, good. And then the next one would be nine, but nine does not divide 48. Um, and so the next one after that would be four squared, which is 16, but 16 does divide 48. 16 times three is equal to 48. And then the next one would be uh, 25, but that doesn't divide 48. And then we're like kind of past the point where we won't find anymore. So that means D squared can be equal to one, four, or 16. So let's go ahead and write that down. D squared is in that set. So that tells us that D is in the set containing one, two, or four. D can only take on those three values. Okay, good. So now what I'll do, I'll go ahead and summarize this at the top of the board and then we'll keep going. So on the last board, we set A equal to D times X, B equal to D times Y, where D was the GCD of A and B. That made the GCD of X and Y one. And then that also transformed this equation into the equation D squared times the quantity X squared, Y squared minus one equals 48. That told us that D squared divided 48. And that led us to three cases, D equals one, D equals two, or D equals four. Now we're gonna work on each of these cases. So let's maybe look at the D equals one case. 
So notice plugging d equals one into this equation will very simply give us x squared y squared minus one equals 48. But now we can just go ahead and factor this side of the equation and that's gonna give us um, xy minus one times xy plus one equals 48. And now what we wanna do is look for two numbers that multiply to 48, but the important thing to notice here is that they must differ by two, because notice that xy minus one and xy plus one differ by two. So can we factor 48 into a factor pair that differs by two? And we can, and the way to do that is by writing it like six times eight. And notice we're working over just natural numbers, otherwise we might also have minus six times minus eight. Okay, good. But now, which one is the six and which one is the eight? But that's pretty obvious here because here this is the smaller one, so it has to be six. And then this xy plus one is the larger one, so it has to be eight. So that gives us this uh, equation, which is xy minus one equals six, which clearly gives us x times y equals seven. And notice xy plus one equaling eight will give us the same kind of thing. But now, since again, x and y are natural numbers, this gives us only two pairs of solutions. We have x comma y equals one comma seven or x comma y equals seven comma one because seven is a prime number so that's the only way that you can factor this. Okay, great. But now since d was equal to one, the GCD of a and b, that means that a is just equal to x and b is just equal to y. So that gives us like our final solution of a, b equals seven, one, or a, b equals one, seven. Good. So now let's move on to the second case when d equals two. And let's see what we get in that case. So notice if d equals two, this is gonna change. So we'll have a four on this side of the equation. So we'll have x squared y squared minus one equals 12. Great, here I just divided the four over. And now we wanna see, can we factor 12 into two numbers that differ by two? Because notice we have the same thing going on here. We have xy minus one, xy plus one equals 12 but there's no way to factor 12 into numbers that differ by two, so there's no solution down this path. So let's finally look at the last case. So we have d equals four, which makes d squared equal to 16. So when we divide this 16 over, we get 48 divided by 16, which is three. And so that gives us this equation, x squared y squared minus one equals three. We can do the same kind of thing, factor it like a difference of squares. So here we have xy minus one times xy plus one equals three. Good, but now there's definitely a way to factor three into factor pairs that differ by two and namely just one times three. <clears throat> so we can go ahead and write this as one times three. That means xy minus one equals one and then xy minus uh, plus one one will be equal to three, but that gives you, you an equivalent equation here. But that means that x times y equals two, but that tells us that we get two solutions out of this. We have x comma y equals one comma two. So in other words, x is one and y is two, or x comma y equals two comma one, kind of the opposite one. Okay, but that's not our final solution. Our final solution involves A and B, which is D times X and D times Y. So let's see what we get for each of those. So this first one, which is one comma two, well notice the greatest common divisor in this case is four, so we've got to multiply that by four. So that's gonna give us four comma eight. And then the next one, A comma B, would be equal to eight comma four. Okay, good. And so we found two solutions. Well, really we found four solutions. They're just kind of in symmetric pairs. And we've also argued why these are the only solutions. Okay, I'll clean up the board. And I'm gonna leave you with some similar problems to try. 
Okay, so now let's look at some further questions. So other than these, you could just think about the same kind of equation with a different number here. And so maybe you could try 24 or maybe 36. The one thing that you have to keep in mind is that this number over here on the right hand side of the equation must be divisible by a perfect square. So obviously all numbers are divisible by a single perfect square, the number one, but maybe to make it interesting, it needs to be divisible by more than just that. Okay, and then maybe some further problems that are in the same vein would be like solve the LCM AB squared plus the GCD AB squared equals N. And again, you just kind of play with that number N until you find like some interesting structure. Or you could maybe look at a similar thing with three numbers. So maybe like the LCM of ABC minus the GCD of ABC equals N. And you can actually probably hack together a bunch of similar problems like this, and they're all like interesting um, and fun exercises. Okay, that's a good place to stop.